What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an awesome video today showing you how to set up paginated report page tooltips. If you've ever set up a report page tooltip in Power BI, you may have realized that sometimes you're not able to show all of your data in that small window. Or for example, I have a table right here and it is showing each individual page of data. For example, we're on page one right now and now we're on page two and now we're on page three. So it's iterating through all of my individual pages and showing basically all of the data I have to show in this table view. Since you can't scroll in a report page tooltip, this takes care of showing the extra data that would be hidden by that scroll bar. Before we jump into this trick, I do wanna let you know in case you are looking for some high quality, affordable Power BI training, I have a lot of training content over on the training.bi elite website. I just recently posted the DA100 exam certification course. Go check that out over on the BI elite training website. Link is in the description. So let's go ahead and dive into a new example here here and set this up from scratch. So I'm gonna go over to a new file. So this file just has my donut chart. It's just my total sales split up by customer category name, which is in my data. So I don't have a report page tooltip set up right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up a new tab and set up this report page tooltip. The first thing when setting up a report page tooltip is coming over to the page information, telling it that it's a tooltip. I'm gonna to call this page RPT for report page tooltip. Then I'm going to change my page size to tooltip size. And then finally, I'm gonna change my view to see it in actual view. So this is gonna be the actual size of a report page tooltip. And first thing I can do is I can throw in a table here. And given what I wanna show, I'm gonna to go to my cities table. I have city's name and my total sales. So right now I have my total sales split up by city, but you see that it has a scroll bar. If I were to set up my report page tooltip right now, you would see that this wouldn't necessarily work because it would cut off everything below uh, my default view. So I'm going to change my tooltip to be a report page, uh, make it the RPT page. And then if I hover over, I could see exactly what I'm looking at. So it's, it's really only gonna show me those first eight or so records with the default sizing of that table. So we're gonna to have to do a couple of things here. Firstly, let's come back over here and I wanna extend this a little bit just to make that sizing perfect. That'll work right there. So um, basically we can set up a couple of measures to kind of paginate this down so that only one page of views will be shown at a certain time. So we can right click here I'm gonna create a ranking measure to just give us an idea of which page of data this should be on. So uh, I am going to call this city ranking, and that's equal to the rank X function. I pass in my all selected city's name. Um, I want to rank based on total sales, so I will calculate my total sales. And then finally, I am going to sort it descending and give it the dents in case there are ties. And this is just kind of basic rank X functionality. I do have a dynamic ranking video on the channel in case you wanna check out how or why I did some of these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay here and minimize this down and throw in our new measure into the table. And you see if I sort by total sales or something like that and extend this out so that we can see our new column. Let me grab that and extend. So we see that if we sort by total sales, we have our city ranking one through eight, basically on that first page. I do need to extend this down just a little bit. So one through eight on that first page and it keeps going. So nine through 16 and we can just keep going on and on and on. And uh, we've effectively ranked our cities. So at this point we need some logic that's going to say if our um, current pagination is on page one, I wanna show uh, all the cities that are ranked one through eight if pagination is on page two, I wanna show all the cities nine through 16. So we can do that with a nice what if parameter. This is gonna create, um, basically just streamline the process and create a table that's gonna be nice to use. So I'm gonna create a what if parameter. I'm gonna call this pagination. And I wanna set it from a whole number from let's just say one to 10. So we'll show the first 10 pages of data and increment by one add slicer to page. We don't actually need to do that here. So click okay. And we are going to look over on this pagination table that we've set up and we're gonna open that up. In this pagination table, we see it is just a series from one to 10. That's actually perfect. So we can actually go ahead and throw in a play axis slicer. And the reason we're gonna do that is because it allows us to iterate through automatically. If you're a fan of the channel, you may have seen that I use the play axis slicer quite a bit 
We can do that just by going to the import from app source for the custom visuals and search for play and add this play axis dynamic slicer. Uh, it already contains because I've used this before in this file, but that's okay. I brought that play axis slicer in and we can throw this in on top of our table. Cool. Let me minimize that down. And all we need to do here is throw in our pagination column. So from our pagination table, it's this column right here, throw that in. And now we can step through the data. This isn't going to do anything as of right now. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this slicer behind. So for example, I can drag that below table and there we go. So now it's behind there. It's not actually doing anything. I do want to add one more measure here and it's going to explain if our uh, current ranking is in view. So if pagination is one, show one through eight. If pagination is two, show uh, nine through 16. So we can do that creating a new measure. I'm gonna call this pagination. And this is simply going to be the round up function of our ranking divided by eight. So let's go ahead and throw that in and see what that does. And this report page tooltip is actually kind of annoying to develop with because there isn't much room here, but we're gonna make do. So our pagination uh, needs an extra function in our roundup. We'll round up with a zero as the digits because we don't need any decimals. And let's go ahead and throw this in our new table. So pagination. So if we scroll over to the right, we see that one through eight are one, and then nine through 16 are two, and so on, and that's because we're using that roundup function. Basically one divided by eight is gonna be a decimal, roll up to one, nine divided by eight is 1.125 round up to two. And we don't necessarily need this to show decimal places, so since I'm a completionist, I'm gonna set that to zero, and we should just have nice whole numbers. There we go, that's perfect. So now we just need one more measure in order to finish our setup of this paginated report page tooltip. So we can create one new measure, and it's going to be called is current page. And we are going to set this equal to an if statement. If our pagination measure equals the min of our pagination uh, table value, we want to set that equal to one, else we'll set it equal to zero. So basically pagination is our measure in the table. Min of our pagination table pagination value is going to return us pretty much the current pagination value that we're iterating over in that play axis slicer. So if it is the same, we'll return one. If not, we'll, we'll return a zero and click enter. Now the last thing we have to do here is filter down this table using that new measure we just created. So I'm gonna open up the filters pane and I do see I have an error. Let's see what it says here. Cannot be found or used in this expression. Pagination value is that measure. So we actually just need that pagination column. So let me just change that real quick. So not pagination value, pagination, perfect. And then finally, we will open up our filters pane and bring in that is current page, put it on our table. So highlight your table. Is current page goes in the filters on this visual. And let's just say our is current page is one, apply filter. So right now we can actually see that we only have our single table here, our first page. We don't have a second page. So city ranking, these can actually go. We just use those for demo purposes. Now we just have one page of data here and that's because the minimum of our pagination uh, value on our table is one. So let's go ahead and open up our, or click behind and get our pagination play axis slicer. There it is. So we're gonna have to set a couple of settings here. If we were just to click play, this would work as expected. So we're on the first page now, second page, third page, fourth page, for example. But I do wanna change a couple of features here. So firstly, in order to make this work perfectly, we can go to the formatting and animation settings. I want to iterate through every two seconds and click on auto start and loop. So all of these will make this just work seamlessly. And finally, I'm going to minimize our table down a little bit. And I am just going to add a card just to show us what page we're on, as you saw in the demo. So I'm gonna minimize that, bring that up to the top. Perfect. So this needs to be pretty small. We can put this over here in the top right. And I'm going to take our pagination value, throw that in the fields. 
perfect. So the last thing I really wanna do is you might realize that our table total is only showing us the values that are showing up here uh, in this current page view, but I want this to show my total all time. So really all I need to do is add some logic to my total sales calculation. And this pertains to my data, it may not pertain to yours, but I like to set it up this way. So if is in scope, my city name. So basically if I'm just looking on the city row level, I want to return exactly what we've been returning, this sum x, else I want to return that sum x, but with my all selected city names. So return my sum x, all selected city stable, that'll work. Close off this if, and I realize I had an error. I'm only supposed to use all here because all selected will only filter down to what I'm showing here in the table. So now we have our total sales across all of our different pages, not even just the first 10 pages. This, this will be all of the pages. So now we have a current working example of our paginated report page tooltip. I'm gonna change uh, these column widths a little bit, just so that it's not changing column widths all the time. So let's go ahead and extend this, maybe extend our entire table just a little bit. That's perfect. And now we can go back to our report page tooltip just to make sure that this is all working in the end. Perfect. So sales volume. And now I can hover over. We start on page one, start iterating over page two, page three, page four. Perfect. So now we have our report page tooltip that is paginated and iterates over just in case you have extra data that's spilling over maybe to bottom rows of a table, or you can pretty much use this in many different ways in case you have data that is just too big to show in a report page tooltip. So I hope you like this video. Make sure you check out that training over at training.bielite.com and I will see you in the next video.